Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today let's review a fantastic Thunderbolt dock for your new MacBook M1 or any other MacBook for that matter. It provides a total of 15 expansion ports for your MacBooks and is a really, really nice product to have uh, for people who are not wanting to use too many dongles. This is a one-stop solution. It gives you all the ports you may ever want and also charges your MacBook up to 87 watts of power. So you can see it has a SD card slot, audio in and out. This is a USB-C 3.1 Gen 1 data only port. And then it's got USB-A ports. There is five of them, one, two, three, four, five at the back, one at the front. And you also get the Thunderbolt 3 host charging. This is what charges your MacBook up to 87 watts. And then you have the Thunderbolt 3 downstream. You have display port. This is for the power to this dock itself. And you have gigabit ethernet digital optical as well. Sad emission is HDMI. I was quite surprised to see that. But anyway, let's get into the box and see what it contains. These are the rubber feet for the dock. So depending on how you wish to place it, you might want to use these if you want to place this on a horizontal orientation. And that is completely optional. This is the main cable. This is a Thunderbolt cable, Thunderbolt 3 cable. It's very, very expensive to buy this from Apple also. So it's a very valuable cable and this is what does all the magic. It provides all that throughput from the MacBook to the dock. Then you have the power cable itself for the Thunderbolt dock. It's quite a big sizable brick for this dock. But again, you can have this hidden somewhere uh, out of sight behind your desk. And this is what will be used to power the dock and charge the MacBook at the same time. So this is in the space gray color. So it's actually smaller than what I had imagined it would be. It's not that big, that's quite good to see. So if you wanted to travel with this, you could, but I suppose the added size of the charger and the dock would be a big thing to carry. So really it's only meant for desktop use. This matches nicely with my MacBook Pro and Air. And there you go, that's the back of it. That's where all the magic happens. Starting with the Gigabit Ethernet, you have four USB-A ports, and these are five gigabits per second. This is the port I'll connect the MacBook to. This is again a charging port, 10 gigabits per second, USB Gen 2, display port, and this is for the powering the dock itself. On the front also, you have the card reader right here, and you've got the headphones and the microphone jack, and you've got a USB 5 gigabits per second port and a USB-A port. So you're not left wanting for ports uh, with this dock. Now we're all aware of the more obvious benefits with having such a dock. Obviously you get your 15 expansion ports. What's most impressive with the new M1 Max is the fact that it can solve the problem of the USB bus speeds. As you may be aware, the USB speeds, the transfer speeds when connecting an external drive with the new M1 Max are not as fast as with the Intel MacBooks. In my previous video, I showed that when the battery is below 40%, sometimes the M1 MacBook Air can take up to 51 seconds to transfer a 7.5 GB file from one of the Samsung T5 SSDs. The same file was transferred in just 13 seconds with the Intel MacBook Pro 15 inch from 2018. So with this dock, because it's powered, it's got a beefy power adapter, basically you can transfer that same file in 14 seconds. So it matches the speed that you get with Intel. So not only does it give you the expansion ports, but it also gives you the same USB transfer speeds with any drive that you would have got with an Intel based Mac. So that is one serious advantage. The other thing is the transfer speeds that I tested with the uh, SD card slot are also as fast as possible. They're almost at par with the SanDisk ImageMate Pro card reader that I tested earlier. I'll leave a link 
to the video in the description. So it offers the same sort of speeds. You've obviously got the audio input and output jacks, means all you have to connect literally is just one cable. And then every other port gets enabled on your MacBook. You get the fastest speeds. You don't have to connect an external drive directly to the MacBook. You can benefit from the speeds, the high speeds that the Thunderbolt port offers, all while being connected to this dock. So if you see here, there's a little uh, USB-C port at the back, which is a 10 GB per second port. This is significantly faster than the one on front. I tested both of these in terms of read and write speeds from the T5 SSD. And what I found was that the rear port was matching the Intel MacBook Pros, whilst the front was more or less similar to what the M1's own Thunderbolt port provides. So it's about 19.5 to 20 seconds to transfer a 7.5 GB file. And the one at the back does it in about 14 seconds, which is just about equal to the uh, Intel MacBook Pro's Thunderbolt ports. In terms of how hot this gets, I've seen that when you're using it to its maximum capacity, charging your MacBook and also running a display using the Ethernet ports, transferring data from the USB ports, it sometimes does get warm, which is why they've given this sort of heat sink design to the whole enclosure, but it never gets uncomfortably hot. Also, there is no hum or whining sound coming out of this dock at all. It's completely silent. So if you have one of these where that problem exists, do make sure that you claim the warranty for that because that should not be the case. This is a completely silent unit and it should perform completely silently. In terms of drawbacks, there's really only a couple of them. The first one is the size, although this unit itself isn't that big. So you can see it's slightly smaller than the iPhone 12 itself. So it's not that tall. It looks bigger in the photographs, but in real life, it's not that big a dock. But obviously because of the power adapter, that being quite big, it's not really a portable solution. It's meant for desktop use and it really excels in that environment. The big drawback is availability. If you're located somewhere in North America or Europe, then you can buy one of these from the Apple store itself and the Apple online website. In India, it's not available. Unfortunately, you will have to import it, which means that the cost, if you were to import it via the postal method will double in this case. So it will cost you more than 40,000 rupees, at which point it's simply unaffordable, not recommended at all. In the US, it's available for $250. And for that, there is simply no other dock that offers the amount of expansion ports and value that this offers. And for the new M1 MacBooks, I think this is an indispensable companion. So if you have some way of getting it to India, importing it through a friend, or perhaps, you know, carrying it yourself, when the coronavirus allows us to do so, uh, this would be the best option to get. At twice the price, certainly not worth it, but for $250, you cannot beat this. I do have Amazon affiliate links in the description below for whichever region this is available in. So I'd appreciate if you'd click on those links to buy this product. Thanks for watching. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing. I'll see you in my next one.